Yeah, I think these questions are fairly straightforward. There's nothing really complicated, but that's the nature of the chapter itself. Uh, external files can be integrated into SAP using the document managing system. A document is made up of the dash and the dash and the original on which it's based. Yeah, document info record and the original. Uh, what do we need to link a document to an SAP object? Link the associated document info record to the SAP object. Yep. Uh, originals can be stored in dash areas. Secure. Secure areas for maintaining any required confidentiality. Secure areas. Again, you know, sometimes these fill in the blanks may be a little ambiguous, but the real exam questions are not going to be like this. Okay. So again, I, re I emphasize these are the concepts around which I expect that they'll create questions. Right. So once you have these ideas and words under your control, you should be good. And also just to digress a little bit, uh, I think my the reading assistant has about 600 questions total. All the modules put together, right? And that's, uh, you can go through that, that's a little difficult. Uh, but I think going through these is a lot easier. Uh, you know, once you have these questions, going through these is easier. So if you want to do a quick review, I would suggest just going over all these questions for all the modules. I think you'll, you know, you'll be able to do it in an hour or so. Very quickly, because you'll know most of the answers, I think, having done it a couple of times. And then, of course, if you want a more detailed thing, you could go and look at the, uh, the reading assistant or the actual slides. I, I think uh, what I've tried to do is in the slides capture uh, all the minor details that they've uh, that they've put in the notes, and then I've tried to put them on the slides themselves. Right now, this is a change from what I did earlier. Earlier, I used to focus on just conveying the basic concepts, but what I found is that they're really delving into details. So I think I've captured all the important details in these questions. <clears throat> okay. Uh, once a document is linked to, a, to an SAP object, it's possible to navigate directly between the two without going through the document info record. True. 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 Uh, from which side can the object links between SAP objects and documents be maintained? Either side. Either side. Okay. They can be maintained from either side. Connections between SAP and CAX systems are established through the DASH interface, PLM, PLM interface. Or archive link. Yeah, they say archive link also, right. But I think PLM interface is the main one. Archive link sounds like a link to just some document. Okay. Uh, so if you're faced with selecting just one there, I would say go with PLM. Uh, what types of in interfaces does PLM use internally to establish connection between SAP and other systems? RFC and Java, RFC and BAPI, Java, Java Connector, whatever names. Okay. Uh, so if there's a multiple choice, you should just be looking for these specific things. Which of the steps would come before all of the others in the classification process? C, creation of characteristics. Okay. Yeah, if you looked at the steps, that's the order in which they had done it, right? They said first create the characteristics, then create classes, then assign classes to objects, and then assign values to those uh, the characteristics, and then do the classification, I mean, and then do the search. Okay, so the first step happens to be creation of characteristics. That's the way they, they want to do it. A class consists of characteristics. Assignment is the process of linking a dash with a dash. Class with an object, linking a class with an object, right? That is, you're taking, yeah, it's not a specific material. In SAP, you can link any SAP object to, to classification system, right? So, uh, it's a process of connecting an SAP object to a class. What is object? Characteristics. 10 characteristics, yeah. 11, assignment is the process of linking a, a, a class with an SAP object. I put a for both, but I guess it should be and for one of them. <laughs> okay. That was a good <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I just said linking. I played safe there. You know, it's not clear from reading it what is being assigned to what. 
right? It's not, I don't know if the class is being assigned to the object or the object is being assigned to the class. So I just said connecting or linking. Okay, value assignment involves assigning values to characteristics for a specific object. Materials with lots of different possible variations are called configurable, configurable materials, right? Uh, materials with lots of, okay, that we've said that. Uh, what for what kinds of, for the kinds of materials referred to above, the bomb is a super bomb and contains? No, this, the bomb, the super bomb itself, what does the super bomb contain? All the objects produce necessary to, uh, all the components necessary to produce all the variants. Okay, that's what is the answer? configurable materials. Configurable materials. 13 is configurable materials. Yeah. Yeah, so the bomb, the super bomb contains uh, a list of all the components required to make all the variants. And uh, the super routing contains all operations to produce all the variants. Okay, respectively called 16. Yeah, 15. All the operations, because it's routing, right? So it's all the operations to produce all the variants. Super task list, yeah. Super routing, super task list. Yeah, I, I don't know, in the slide, do they have super task list? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, 16. Dynamic bomb. Dynamic bomb and dynamic uh, operations list or task list or routing. Well, configured bomb. Professor configured also. Yeah. Shouldn't it be configured? Yeah, you could say that also. It's, I don't think it's a technical term, right? So it's configured or dynamic. They use both the terms in different contexts, right? Dynamic bomb and uh, and dynamic uh, operations list or dynamic routing. Yeah, I think the main point here is it's not the specific term, but the concept that it's the configured output of whatever that is. Okay, 17, uh, the SAP tool that enables us to view all the functionality, functionally related objects in one single view is product structure browser, product structure browser. In the context of engineering workbench, what is a work list? Work list is a, a list of objects and what you want to do with them. That is, in engineering workbench, what you do is you say, I want to operate on object A, B, C, D, E. That's what is a work list. The list of objects we are going to work on. And the main purpose is that you can specify that you want to work on item X of the bomb or operation X of a routing. And then the system will be able to lock only those things. That's the main point. Okay. We'll see. We'll discuss that with the next one. Okay. Name two types of objects that e EWB helps us to maintain. Bomb routing. Bomb routing. Bomb and routing. Those are the main things. And what are the advantages of using EWB over other ways of simultaneous processing? Right. So this is a context in which we are talking about work lists. That work lists enable simultaneous processing. In simultaneous processing, what we're saying is, uh, it's possible for different people to be working on different components of the same bomb or the same routing, right? You might be working on item, uh, the first item in the bomb, I might be working on the second item in the bomb simultaneously. This would not be possible in, if you were just maintaining the bomb through the regular screen. And that is because when you maintain the bomb through the regular screen, you lock the entire object, right? The system doesn't know what you're planning to change, so it will lock the whole object. Whereas with the engineering workbench, you're saying specifically, I intend to work on this item 
of the bomb and this item of the thing. So then it can go and selectively lock them and may leave the others available for uh, the, the other components available for others to work on. Okay, so that's the main advantage that uh, it enables concurrent processing. Okay, which of the following are advantages of using engineering change management? A and C. Tracking multiple changes, monitoring. Yeah, right. A and C. B and D are outrageous. A and C. Okay. Um, what two options do we have for engineering change management? Change master and ECO. Right. Change master and ECR slash ECO. Those are really, it's not very clear from reading the notes, but those are the two different ways in which you could do change management, right? The the change master record is a lightweight sort of approach to change management and ECR ECO is the more formal approach to change management. Which is the more elaborate and what advantages does it have? Uh, and the, yeah, ECR ECO is the more elaborate process and advantages? Right, workflow, check and release, monitoring, control, you can say anything because it has the formal process of, uh, you know, request and uh, engineering change request, engineering change order and so on. Okay. Okay, so take a look at uh, at these points in the chapter and because I think these are the areas in which they generally tend to ask questions here. Okay. Okay, so let's break for lunch and meet again after an hour.